currently trying to get some work done. I have quite a bit of edits to take care of, photo shoots and all that other stuff. And I was feeling a bit overwhelmed, so I said, let me just take a break. <laughs> take out my camera and try to answer some of these questions that I have compiled a very long list of. I might as well just start with um, a few and see how many I can get through today. So let's hang out, okay? So the first question I have is, how do you incorporate your kids' interest? Do you let them pick their studies? Okay, um... Hmm, so I don't let them pick their studies, but I pay attention to them. I mean, that is what our homeschool is. It's just a compilation of everything that I know about my kids. <laughs> so um, I know exactly what they like. I know exactly what they're um, interested in at any given moment because I'm always listening to them. I mean, we're always together, so I pay attention to the things they say, the questions they ask. When they have conversations with one another, I pay attention to that. And um, I take either mental notes or actual physical notes, like in my phone or something like that. And I mean, I think that sometimes we make it a little bit harder than it is. I mean, I think we all know what our kids like, especially at this younger stage. We all know what they really enjoy, and so, I try to incorporate as much of what they enjoy as possible. So my older son is loves art. And so I try to incorporate as much art in what he's doing, as many art references in everything that he does. Every now and then I'll ask them questions like, you know, is there anything in particular that you would like to um, explore more? Like... Um, any questions that you have but for the most part I like I said I pay attention to their questions and I take notes so I already kind of know I don't think I'm at this stage where I'm letting them you know completely pick out their studies because I feel like these are this I feel like these are the times of I know I've said this so many times exploration and discovery um they need exposure to things um, so they have natural questions and everything but they first need to be exposed to things and so that's why I don't let them pick well I want to you know study this or study that yet because there's so much stuff um, I feel like we'll just kind of get stuck in one particular circle um, especially when we're not doing a lot of traveling and things things where they would be getting natural exposure um and then they could have questions and then you know we let that lead us wherever it's going to lead us um we don't have as much of that because we spend a lot of time in the walls of our home and so i feel like it's important to um guide them in that area because there's just a ton of stuff they don't know so that was the long answer <laughs> to um, letting them pick their studies. And as far as incorporating their interest, it's incorporated into whatever we do because they just learn better that way. Okay, so the next question is, can you explain what a book year is? So I'm actually almost done with my book year video um, and that will explain exactly what it is. I think I've made it a lot bigger than it is. Um, I like to take, you know, just simple things and be extra about it. And basically that's what the book year is. I decided this year that I really wanted to focus on reading a lot of stories with the kids. And so I called it a book year. And in my household, if I make it a thing, they're all for it. So I just kind of had some ideas about ways that we could read more together and some fun things that we could incorporate that would make our reading time even more exciting. So um, that is what my book year is. This year we are focusing um, like 80 something percent on reading our books. Okay, so my next question, how much are the tokens worth? Okay, I get quite a lot of questions about our token system and I think I am going to do another video, just kind of an update on how it all works in any small changes or big changes we've made to our token system, but I have done a video on it before. So I will post a link 
um, in the cards or in the description box, just kind of showing you what it is. It's the same um, system. It's just a few tweaks that we've made along the way to make it better and better for us. But basically we use tokens. Um, it is our system of rewards and um, they earn tokens for many different things and then they redeem them for many different things and those things um, are changed and adjusted all the time. It's basically like our family's, our family's um, currency. Is that right? <laughs> so they get tokens for everything. It's for really engaging in their schoolwork, um, for answering questions correctly, um, for going above and beyond, for doing the chores that they're responsible for. Um, they get tokens for everything and I assign different amounts or values um, based on just what I feel like is the level of difficulty. The kids get to redeem their tokens for many different things. They can have an extra 15 minutes to extend their bedtime a bit. Um, they can have an extra snack. They get to pick out of the prize box. Um, there's just a lot of different fun things that the kids like to use their tokens for. It's really, really worked out so well for us um, in homeschool and in just life in general. So I use these. I just got these from Amazon little gold tokens. So we generally have two sessions of what we call token time. Um, normally it's the first thing that we do when we start our homeschool day. Um, this is after they finish their regular home morning routine and we'll sit down and do a token time and they will get a certain amount of tokens for um, completing their morning task on their own without me having to nag after them. So brushing their teeth is worth two tokens, making their bed is worth two tokens. So that's just kind of an example of how the tokens work. And I love them. So we keep using them. <laughs> I'll do a whole nother video on that um, to go into a bit more detail. Uh, the next question, how does the iPad work with the good and the beautiful? Okay, so this, is, this is not just with the good and the beautiful. It works this way for any worksheet or download that I want to use and be able to um, complete on the iPad. We use an app called Notability. And I have a video on that as well. I guess I can do an updated video um, as soon as I get a chance, but um, I will link to the one that I've done before about how we load them. But the short of it is that I have a Dropbox that's specifically for homeschool and all of my homeschool type worksheets that I download and things, I add to that Dropbox. And then from that Dropbox, I connect it to the app Notability and I'm able to upload it onto Notability and then I can annotate and take notes all over and fill out those worksheets on um, the Notability app. So I do that same thing with The Good and the Beautiful. I just upload it to um, my Dropbox and then I upload it from my Dropbox to Notability and there's a whole file for them that they can just continue to complete um, as we go through the curriculum. So it works out extremely well um, for us and I can, like I said, I can do an updated video to kind of show you exactly how we do it and exactly how we use it, but I really love it because they're able to complete them. They have a little fun with the different um, things that they can do on the iPad that they can't do on um, on the paper form and then also they can do things like record their voice when they're reading some of the passages savannah really really loves to do that and it's been really instrumental in the way that i teach all three kids at the same time because that is that's a thing it's a struggle so um that's been really helpful for me but i'll do another video on that that i go into more detail about how we use it the next question is, I was wondering what you use for the older kids for math. I found at this age, and I know this is this may or may not be helpful, but at this age, math is just not difficult. 
So you, you start off with counting, you move on to basic addition, basic subtraction, shapes, um, and things like that. So at this stage, it's not difficult for, m for me and it's not really difficult for them. So I just didn't feel like I needed curriculum for that. So that is why when I started, um, man, I just use apps and we still do use a handful of apps, but now I think we use more heavily the website IXL. So um, by the time this post, I think I would have mentioned a little bit more detail about IXL and how it works. It's basically a curriculum based learning um, program where you can uh, go in and just get as much practice as you would like and we absolutely love it. I'm able to toggle between the grade levels and I'm able to um, pick out whatever we are studying. So if we're doing um, units of measurement or graphs, double digit addition, triple digit addition, long division, whatever um, the case may be, I just find what I need in IXL and that helps us to get some practice in. So I teach the basic concept which normally comes along very naturally. So like fractions and division, addition, subtraction, multiplication. I haven't really um, found a need for anything else just yet. So I actually was contacted by teaching textbooks um, to see if um, I wanted to try that out and share that with you guys and um, I didn't at this time because I just I just don't feel like I need it just yet now I know there will come a time where I need a bit more of it but for right now there's just so much that we can um, continue to cover and continue to practice I just really want them to have a very strong foundation in math and so I don't want to move forward too quickly um so we stay in our lane right now there that was a long answer to your question that um for my older son and my younger two we use mostly ixl for math practice and workbooks um and just a lot of real life math that is what we use the next question is there a list of books that you recommend somewhere no <laughs> there's not there's not I mean all throughout my channel I will mention books that we read and how we enjoyed them um I guess I can when I find some time go and sit down and uh list all the books that we've just thoroughly enjoyed and I will eventually but probably no time soon because because <laughs> Because I'm already fighting overwhelm as it is. So, um, yeah. Now, I do think that there's many different places you can find recommended books. Um, I do know that um, the Read Aloud Revival website has a list of recommended books. Um, I do know The Good and the Beautiful also has a list of recommended books. But as far as what um, I recommend, it's just kind of all throughout my channel. And eventually, I will try and make a list eventually <laughs> I am going to start moving forward um, compiling the list based on what we're reading for our book year but as far as the things that we've read um, in the past I you know I, I'll just have to wait for some time to be able to do that okay I think I'll do one more question. One more question. I'm starting to incorporate independent work from my fourth grader because she is finally ready for a little something. Do you think that she should do her independent work in the morning to start off our homeschool day or at the end? I know that's basically a personal preference question, but I'm not sure how I want to try it first. So that this is actually a really good question. Um, and I mean, I think you already know that you're just gonna have to try something. Yeah, I would say just try out what you feel like would fit them best based on what you know about their habits and their personality. So. For instance, my oldest is an early bird. <laughs> His mama is not. 
<laughs> but um, he's an early riser and he often gets up before I do, which I used to think was bad. Now I don't. We're different people. He gets, <laughs> he, gets, he gets up before I do. So what I did was create a schedule where a part of his independent work could be done when he gets up before we're all ready. Um, and that works out really, really well for him. So there are certain things in our schedule. Um, we have a general routine or flow of our day, but there are certain things that can be done um, independently if they want to do it ahead of when we're doing it in our schedule. And then what will happen is when that part in the day comes along, they've already completed what they were responsible for for the day in that area so then they're considered an early finisher and they can go off and do um something out of their morning basket normally um which means that they just kind of have free time to um choose what they would like sometimes they can make suggestions too they don't just have to do um their morning work but um, my older son tends to do that he tends to wake up in the morning and get some of his independent work done before we even start our day. He feels really accomplished when he does that. My younger son is the opposite. He's my night owl. He is up past 11 o'clock every night almost. Pray for me, saints. <laughs> He's my night owl. He has always been that way. He was that way when he was a baby. He used to fall asleep in the jumper and it was so frustrating then, but that is just part of his personality that's just who he is so a lot of his independent work is done in his bed using his um bedside light so yeah i just think that it's important to pay attention to to their natural rhythms and their personalities and then create a plan accordingly and then if something is not working you can tweak it and you can change it you could try something new obviously what i found that works is i try to stick to a new plan at least for two weeks before i decide that it doesn't work and then even if i try something out for two weeks and it's working really well i'll still switch it up and then for another two weeks try something different and then choose between the two which ones are um are gonna fit the best so that's what i would say just really pay attention to your child and their natural rhythms. You could make them do something outside of their natural rhythms. I kind of struggled with this a lot and sometimes I still kind of struggle with it um, because, you know, people will often say, well, it's not like that in the real world. But I'm a believer in creating my own little world. So... <laughs> If you're like me, um, I'm not trying to conform to the ways of this world. And so I hold on to that. But it was a struggle uh, because I'd have family members say, oh, they need to get up. They need to get up early or um, they need to learn how to do this or they need to learn how to do that. And, you know, a lot of it you feel like is valid, but that's because we were used, we are very used to um, conforming to the ways that the world does things and that um, jobs in the world run. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I struggled with that and sometimes I still do. Um, but I've learned that there's so much more fruit, you know, we make so much more progress when we customize our educational experience. That's one of the reasons why homeschool is loved is because you're able to customize your experience and make something that fits um, each individual child. So if that's the point, why, why not have them in school but then choose to make them adhere to a plan that is opposite of what you chose this thing for? Does that make sense? And that is not like me telling anybody what to do. I'm just saying that is kind of my pep talk I give to myself whenever I feel that way. Like, oh, they have to be up by this time or they have to do these things. Yes, there are certain things, certain habits um, 
that I do want them to practice. But but I get to decide that. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a schedule that fits how they learn best because it's the most progress that I'm looking for. And I want things to not be an uphill battle. That's not what I want in my homeschool. So that's what I choose. Anyway, it was getting chatty. Um, <laughs> So I have a lot more questions that I have not gotten to so hopefully I can film another one of these Q&A's really soon but I hope that answered those questions without being too around and about the way. Yeah if you have any more questions please feel free to leave them in the description box below and I will add them to my list. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed and I will see you in our next video.